good morning happy sunday you know i was thinking today the air around us has been a little bit foggy lately and when i was thinking about that and driving in this morning i was remembering when i was a little girl and one of my very very favorite things to do was look through the telescope that my grandfather had um, in his house. And we would look at the stars and we would look way far out across the lake that we lived by and it was so much fun and I loved looking through it because when I looked through it, I could see things that otherwise I wouldn't be able to see. And that is what we are gonna talk about today. Before we do, we have two things to do. The very first thing is that we're gonna pray and then we're gonna learn our memory verse. Let's close our hands, close our hands, let's fold our hands, close our eyes, and go before the throne. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. I thank you for each and every kid who is listening. And Jesus, I pray that you would show each and every one of us today what it means to look to search for you. Um, and Jesus, that you would also remind us that whenever we look for you, we will find you. You don't ever hide yourself from us. So, Jesus, we ask that you would reveal yourself to us today. Give each and every one of us eyes to see you, ears to hear you, and hearts that want to obey. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. All right, so our verse today is a really special one to me. I'm going to tell it to you first, and then we're going to learn some hand motions. I want you guys to do the hand motions with me. The verse is Jeremiah 29, 13. And in the verse, we're listening to God's voice as he tells us this. If you search for me, you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart. And I love that because when God gives us a promise, he keeps it. So we're going to do this all together. I want to show you the hand motions first. I, I was telling you a few minutes ago about my grandfather's telescope. We're going to use our hands like binoculars. And we're going to say, when you search for me. So we're going to make sure you have your hands up. We're going to be looking through binoculars. When you search for me, you will find me. And when we say find, we're going to go, <gasps> find I found it so when you search for me you and you will find me when you search for me again with your whole I want you to make a big 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 circle with your whole and end with your hands in a heart right at your heart all right let's do that one more time just so you guys are familiar with it and then we're gonna do it all together you will search for me and you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. All right, let's do that together. The first time we do it, we're just gonna do it normally. Are you ready for this? You will search for me and you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Now, I want you guys to be little, 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 little. So we're gonna crouch down right here. You guys go ahead and do that with me. Is everybody down low? Ready? You will search for me and you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. All right, now let's get big, all right? I want you guys to be, I'm gonna get up on my tippy toes to be as big, Ooh, I gotta bounce as you possibly can be. You will search for me, and you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Man, that's so hard. I'm not very good at balancing. I think you guys are probably better. Let's do it one more time all together. When you are saying this verse, I want you to really use your voice to tell what this verse is meaning. So when you say search, we're just gonna, when you search, search for me and then get excited you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart jeremiah 29 13. good job you guys i am going to kind of get ready get my bible you guys if you'd like to go grab your bibles too we're going to open up to the book of mark get ready
All right, you guys, are you ready to search for him with your whole heart? That is what we're going to be doing today. Before we do, are you ready to pray one more time? Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you that you gave us your word so that we could search it for you. And Lord, the truth is when we search your word for you, we always find you. I pray today that you would show us even more about who you are and how you love us as we search your word. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. So we are in the book of Mark. I can't tell you what page it's on because all of our Bibles are different, but the book of Mark chapter 11. You guys can take a few minutes to flip there and find it in your Bibles. And we're going to be all the way toward the end of the chapter, starting in verse 27. If you need help, push pause. Grab your parent, grab someone older than you who can help you find it. Again, it's Mark chapter 11, starting in verse 27. Ready, set, go find it. Have you found it? I hope you did. I have it open. I'm going to go ahead and get started. You guys can follow along with me. The last couple of weeks, we've been talking about Jesus in his father's house in the temple. And it's been really cool. We've seen him do amazing things, right? We have seen him clear out that temple, clear out his father's house so that it was once again the way that God created it to be the way he purposed it to be, a place where everybody from every tribe, every nation, and every tongue could come and pray. We've seen him do that. And we saw him curse a fig tree, not just for, because, not for the sake of him being angry, but because he was teaching his disciples to have faith, to pray, and to ask for forgiveness, to be forgiven, and to forgive those around him. Jesus is always teaching us, and he has something to teach some people today, some people back then, and hopefully you guys too. Jesus, starting in verse 27, and his disciples, one more time, they're walking into Jerusalem. You guys, can you all walk with me? They're walking into Jerusalem, and then they walk up, 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 a lot of steps, so many steps up to the temple. I've actually, I've walked up those steps before, and I tell you what, my legs were hurting by the time I got to the top. And Jesus and his disciples, they walked up and up and up and up, and the Bible tells us that he walked into the temple. Jesus walked into the temple with his disciples, and there were some people there waiting for him. You guys, you can tell me, who are the people who worked in the temple? Does anyone remember what they were called? They were called priests, right? The Bible tells us that the chief priests, that means the ones who were in charge, and the scribes, they're the ones who were writing everything down, taking all of the notes, and the elders, these are the people who are um, in authority over the people of Israel. So these are very important people, and they all walked and they gathered around Jesus. They were waiting for him because they had a question for him. Now, I want all of you guys to tell me and remember when we hear about the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees and the elders, do you guys think, were they looking for Jesus because they were excited to see him? No, no, they weren't. These Pharisees, they were pretty grumpy. These chief priests, they were pretty grumpy. So while we're talking about the chief priests, I need everybody to make their grumpiest face, okay? We're going to make the face that I think that these chief priests were making as they were coming around and circling around Jesus. All right, everybody? Mean face, grumpy face. I'm going to try and keep it the whole time that we're talking about the Pharisees. They gathered around Jesus and they said, by whose authority? Who said you could clear out the temple? Who said? Who said you could? By whose authority are you doing all of these things? Who gave you the power? Who gave you the right? Well, Jesus, now I'm going to stop being grumpy because Jesus did not have his grumpy face on. Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question and you will answer me. And when you answer me, I will tell you who has given me the right, who's given me the authority to do all of these things. 
So Jesus, he doesn't answer their question right away. He's not being mean. He is looking to see how are they asking this question. I bet he could probably tell by the look on their faces. But even more than that, Jesus wants to know about their hearts. Are their hearts hard and grumpy or are their hearts soft? He asked them, was the baptism of John, that means was John the Baptist, Baptist, baptized? And in whose authority was he baptized? Was he baptized because of God, by God, or was he baptized by men? That really means who is the one who sent John the Baptist? Was it God or was it all of the people in the world? Well, the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests, they started whispering to each other. And you want to know what they were whispering? They were saying, well, this is a tough question. If we say to Jesus that we think that John the Baptist was sent by God, then, then we have to acknowledge that he really was sent by God. Then we actually have to have faith in that. We have to trust God. But, but, we can't say that. But if we say that his power came from men, oh, oh no. And they got really afraid because they knew that all of the people believed that John the Baptist was sent by God. So they knew, oh my goodness, if we say that John the Baptist was sent by men, all of the men are going to get angry at us because they believe he came, he came from God. The Pharisees were stuck. If they said that John the Baptist was sent by God, they had to trust God. If they said that John the Baptist was sent by men, they were going to get in trouble with all of the men. They were completely stuck. And so they said to Jesus, let's put all of our mean, our mean faces back on. They said to Jesus, we don't know. Have you ever done that? You don't want to answer the right answer even though you know what the truth is. And so you say, mm, I don't know. I don't know. So then Jesus said to them, neither then am I going to answer you. He had figured out, he knew that their hearts weren't soft, that they weren't looking to find out the truth of who he was and the truth of who sent him. Their hearts were hard. All they wanted was to get him in trouble. They did not want to trust God. Now, I think all, each and every one of us, sometimes we can look around and say, my heart is hard. We could be really grumpy some days, right? Have you guys ever been grumpy? Make a really grumpy face. That wasn't really a grumpy face. <laughs> you can, we can be really grumpy and we can hear things about Jesus. Our parents can tell us about Jesus or our brothers and sisters can tell us about Jesus or we can be at church and hear about Jesus. Our friends can hear about Jesus. And because we are so grumpy, we don't want to hear the truth, right? Have you guys ever been there? Uh, the truth is I have been there. I've had days where I've been so grumpy that I don't want to hear the truth. Jesus knew that that's where the Pharisees' hearts were that day. But do you guys remember what our Bible verse tells us? Anybody? When will we seek Jesus and find him? When we seek him with what? Our whole heart. That's right. Jesus knew those Pharisees, those scribes, those chief priests, they weren't looking for him with their whole heart. They weren't even looking for him with half a heart. Jesus, though, he says to each and every one of you, I want you to look for me with your whole heart. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't look for Jesus when you're sad. When you're sad, it's one of the best times to look for him. You can take your whole heart, as sad as, as it is, and say, Jesus, where are you? I need to know that you're with me. And he promises, our Bible verse today, when you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me you can be really really hurt and seek Jesus with your whole heart you can take all of the hurt that you have and with your whole heart say Jesus I'm hurting so much and I need to know that you can help me that you can heal me and Jesus he says you brought your whole heart you're looking for me with your whole heart here I am I want to heal you I want to love you you guys you can even be really angry because somebody has done something mean or the world is is just 
crazy. You can be really angry and you can even bring your heart that way to Jesus. Jesus, I am so angry. I need you to tell me the truth. I need you to help me see. I need you to help me understand. And Jesus, he says, when you seek for me with your whole heart, you will find me. He just wants your whole heart. It can be sad. It can be mad. It can be hurting. It can be glad. It can be peaceful. Wherever your heart is, Jesus just says, when you search for me with your whole heart, you will find me. The chief priests, <laughs> the airplanes are here. The chief priests and the elders and the scribes that day, you guys remember, they weren't searching for Jesus with their whole heart. But he, you guys remember who he said and invited to come close to him to be blessed by him? The little children. You guys, every single one of you kids have really soft hearts. And that's a really good thing. You have a soft heart. And so that means that it is easy for you to come with your whole heart looking for Jesus, right? And as adults, me and your teachers and your parents, sometimes we really learn from you guys what it means to have a soft heart, what it means to look for Jesus with your whole heart. We have a lot we can learn from you. And I want to encourage you guys, let Jesus keep your heart soft. Let him, let him keep reminding you to come to him with your whole heart, to look for him with your whole heart, because he promises. What does he promise? You remember our Bible verse one more time? You will seek me and you will find me when you seek for me with your whole heart. Jesus will never, ever, ever not let you find him. He will always be close to you when you seek him with your whole heart. Let's go ahead and pray. I want to pray for anybody who hasn't yet given their heart to Jesus. You know that if you still have not chosen to follow Jesus, you've chosen not to, not, um, you have not yet chosen to invite him into hurt your heart today, you can look for him with your whole heart and you will find him because he wants to be found by you. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for each and every one of these kids, and I thank you that you created them with soft hearts, with whole hearts that are looking for you. Jesus, I want to pray for any kids today who have not yet asked you to come into their heart, who have not yet said, Jesus, I'm searching for you with my whole heart. Where are you? Jesus, I pray that today you, they would hear you saying to them, today is the day. Look for me with your whole heart. You will find me. I am with you. Jesus, for each and every one of us, whether we're sad or whether we're hurting or whether we're happy and peaceful or whether we're angry and upset, Jesus, would you remind each and every one of us that no matter how we feel, we can search for you with our whole heart. We can find you. And Jesus, you are the one who heals our hurts. You are the one that, that restores our sadness. You are the one that helps us through our anger and our frustration. You are the one who gives us joy and peace and your love. And Jesus, with our whole hearts, we are looking for you today, ready to receive everything you have for us. I pray just that you would bless each and every child who's listening and that they would hear your voice today saying, I am here. I know you are looking for me and I am here. Jesus, we thank you. In your name we pray. Everybody said, amen. You guys, I want to get, hold on, airplanes are flying. I want you to know that Jesus, he, at any moment, if the Pharisees had searched for him with their whole heart, if the chief priests had searched for him with their whole heart, if the elders and the scribes had searched for him with their whole heart, he loved them so much, he would have said, here I am, this is who I am, I am the Son of God. He was just waiting for them to be ready. He's just waiting for you to be ready too. He loves you so much, and I love you, and I'll see you next week.